Get up and you'll leave if you want it hot. I don't blame you for being scared, for being scared. No, turn an album on on a pin that is called you, baby. I'm fully aware, I'm fully aware. If I could change the stories in between me and you, who knows I'm leaning up, pretending for what to do. That was the Backstreet Boys with the title track off of their new album, This Is Us. And we have another surprise for you guys. Uh -oh. um, this time it's from another friend who heard you were going to be on the show and just had to ask you a question. Take a look. Hi, guys. How are you? It's Debbie Gibson here coming to you from L.A. Um, yes, I've gone back to Debbie now, which brings me to my question. How has being known as teen idols shaped the way you've proceeded musically, or the positive or the negative? How do you take the fans response and how they first came to know you into consideration as a fan. Howie. That's my Good friend. Question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad she went back to Debbie. That's, that's awesome. That's really cool. A t-shirt, by the way. That is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> what do you think? Um, well, you know what? Does it? It's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a phenomena. You know, the, the, the situation that we're in, you know, it's, I guess, we, you know, we've accepted the title boy band. We've accepted the title being, you know, teen pop, you know, group. Um, and it's, it's one of those kind of titles that, you know, will probably never leave us. I think she said something. Did it dictate the style of music that you did moving forward? Well, there forward? was a point when it did. Uh, we had to, well, actually, our, our label uh, wanted to create music that, you know, was geared towards uh, a fan Young base, you know. Right. And, and we would fight with them uh, constantly, uh, really? trying to develop into something that we wanted to. And actually, we talk about it all the time. We were dictated a lot more than certain groups out there um, in were. the direction that we wanted to go. Micromanaged. Uh, micromanaged. And so it was, uh, so just now, recently, for the past couple of albums, uh, when we're not getting as much radio play as we want and TV exposure, you know, we're really. <laughs> Are you guys manning the phone? Do you, do you <laughs> we're we're doing it all ourselves. Uh, yeah, I think that's fantastic. And the only way we could do it is by going on tour, like really, like staying on the road, mm -hmm. promoting ourselves. Um, showing people that we're still here, we're still relevant. But these last couple of albums, 
um, have definitely been our our take on it. You know, our our ears and our influences, and mm. um, they're really turning into something extremely special. Yeah, I think they I just know. have to get to know us again, and then yeah. it'll be all right. Oh, I don't think that's a problem at all. I, well, you <laughs> know what? I, I want to ask you, uh, what of uh, each of you, what is your favorite song? Because you've had so many. For me, it would be. I still love "Don't Want to Lose You Now" from the Millennium Record. It was just such a beautiful song, and the way that we would do it on stage was just cool. We'd be, be up on this riser, each of us facing a different point in the you know arena, and you 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 feel like you're just in your own little world, but we're still singing as a group, and it's just it's just a beautiful song. I mean, mm -hmm. that whole album is just a great record. Tyler, for me personally, it's my favorite song since we recorded off of the first album was "All I Have to Give." Aww. And I actually really liked it, uh, even the choreography that we had when we perform it on every tour. We used to have this hat routine. And this is actually the first tour that we're not doing the hat routine. And uh, so it was kind of like I was missing it at first. But this tour, we've kind of taken a different spin on a lot of different songs and kind of given the, the fans a chance to see it in a new light. The song cool. that I like is um, that one that's kind of really did, it wasn't a single or anything like that. sort of like the one losing now, mm -hmm. 10,000 Promises. And um, a very special song. There was a, there was songs that came out of Sweden, um, and and the Sharon uh, group of writers and and um, producers that were special that that could never be uh, I think recreated. I have to go with two. As long as you love me, um, my wife was cast in the video, so we've been together for over 13 years now, um, celebrating 10 years of marriage this year. That better yeah. be one of your favorite yeah, songs. so it's always <laughs> been one of my answers. But another one um, is a song called Siberia, which, like Mick, that came out of that, uh, that Swedish camp mm -hmm. out in Stockholm. It uh, comes from a very dark place. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. When we come back, Backstreet Boys perform one of their new singles in a way you have never heard before. That's right. Bigger, right here on Annie's Private Sessions. Stay with us. For an exclusive look behind the scenes at the Backstreet Boys visit to our studio, and oh my goodness, you don't want to miss it, just check out our website, aetv.com slash private sessions.